Hello and welcome back to the Exposome Stories. Once upon a time, there was a mullah or a holy man in a village, and one day a passerby found him searching for something just outside his house on the road. So the passerby asked the holy man, uh, "What is the problem? What are you looking for?" And the mullah replied, saying that he is looking for a gold coin he happened to have dropped some time ago. And the passerby also said, uh, "Let me help you. I'll also search for it." And together they searched for some time. And soon, uh, quite a few passersby who were going down that road also joined in the search, and but they couldn't find any gold coin. Uh, so one of them just asked the mullah, uh, "Where exactly did you drop it, sir? We could search better if we started looking from there." And the mullah replied, uh, "I dropped it over there, just inside my house." And the passerby was flummoxed, and he asked the mullah, "Why are you searching in on the roadside when you drop it in the inside the house clearly?" And the mullah said, "There's no light in there, so I couldn't look for it anyway. And he was light there here." Uh, so I thought I'll come and search for it here. What does this story have to do with today's episode? I'll tell you right at the end. But before that, let's have a quick recap of what we've been discussing so far. So so far we've been discussing about the impact of exposomes on our skin's aging, and we've covered quite a few important factors like the UV, sunlight, and uh, we've also talked about uh, diet so far. And today we're going to be talking about pollution. Uh, we can look at pollution as external and internal. and today we'll talk about internal pollution so as we begin to discuss about smoking and its negative effects on the skin and the hair it's not a completely alien factor to us we know about smoking we've been exposed to the ill effects of smoking in multiple health campaigns uh, we see it in the media we also see it right on the packaging of the cigarettes itself which shows that you can have uh, quite a number of serious healthcare problems from uh, heart attacks to lung cancer or or many other types of cancer as well all of which are already out there we already are aware of these things But generally, when we read about uh, you know smoking causes cancer, the timeline of this whole thing, even drawing from uh, a South Indian study done some time ago, they say that it takes about ten years or so based on your exposure to develop cancer. So when somebody talks about smoking leads to health effects uh, over a period of time, especially when they talk about so many years to developing a problem, we kind of tend to think about it like yeah, sometime somewhere in the future something can happen to us. But when it comes to the skin and the hair. the effects are almost immediate uh one study said that you could actually see effects on the smaller blood vessels within 2 minutes of exposure to smoke and another study spoke about 30 minutes of exposure causing significant reduction in the size of the blood vessels supplying the skin and the hair in fact for the hair this is considered as one of the key features that causes hair loss because it causes a vasoconstriction or a constriction of the blood vessels supplying the hair follicle roots and also reducing the oxygen supply to the growth part of the hair and this is an effect which can be seen we're talking about matter of 2 minutes 30 minutes another series talks about 32 puffs of smoke causing accumulation of pigment on the skin So all of these things uh, related to the skin and the hair almost seem to be far more immediate, instant consequences uh, related to the negative effects of smoking as compared to something like a heart attack, which you see, okay, maybe it will happen to me sometime in the future. By which time I will correct my lifestyle. But somehow we never get to correcting that lifestyle. But in the skin and the hair, the result is almost. immediate this happens because of the peculiar chemical mix that we are exposed to in smoke uh, which contains polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons the very same stuff that causes uh, cancer and other serious side effects but it can also cause pigmentation it can also cause skin dryness it can also cause skin sallowness and sagging even in the short to mid term one of the key ways in which smoking causes damage to the skin cells is by stimulating a group of destroyer enzymes called matrix methylproteinases we could call them mmps in short these then directly interact with the other important structural parts of the skin of the dermis particularly which is responsible for maintaining the skin's shape and integrity and this causes collagen breakdown further they also by the negative effects cause the melanocytes to go into an fast aging mode with increased pigment accumulation causes the top level top layer of cells in the epidermis the keratinocytes to also accumulate a lot of toxic substances which naturally should be shed out much faster giving rise to an aged dehydrated flaky effect on the skin we talk about matrix methylproteinases and we talk about other molecular mechanisms in which smoking damages the skin but the fact that smoking is related to aging the concept that smoking can cause a person to look much older what we call as the perceived age to be much higher than what they actually are is not new 
It was actually put forth way ahead, close to one and a half centuries ago in 1856 by a doctor called Samuel Solly, who also talked about the skin changes in addition to the other changes that can be seen in other organs. Uh, presumably, this was among the first kind of conferences where specifically they focused on smoking. And post this, there was a lot of deliberations between doctors as to whether smoking was indeed a health risk or not. And you would find that the outcome of those deliberations was actually a tie. Several doctors thought that smoking was not a health risk, but we have learned in the next almost 150 years or so that smoking causes damage to the cells at multiple levels and not just to one organ system, but globally to the body and in whole. To add a little depth and understanding to how smoking impacts us, a 2021 Spanish study actually found that uh, in seven-year-old children exposed to mothers who smoked through pregnancy, the signs of aging were more compared to children born of mothers who did not have smoking in their pregnancy. So it's not just a particular level of exposure, but as such, the community and the amount of pollution in the community that is attributable to smoking also has an impact. While we know that smoking affects multiple organ systems, when it comes to the hair, um, one of the numbers that we can get is related to premature graying. Uh, a study has pegged the risk of premature graying at 15% for every year of smoking. Of course, there are several other studies that did not find a very significant association, but of course, these studies were matched uh, were based on individuals who are much younger. So, when a person has a certain predisposition, smoking may be an important factor that accelerates the speed of premature graying. When it comes to hair fall itself, uh, in twin studies, men who smoked were found to have a more accelerated or advanced level of hair fall with higher grades of hair loss androgenetic alopecia as compared to their non-smoking twin. So when it comes to male pattern hair loss, uh, an advanced stage, uh, maybe on the hamilton Norwood scale or any advanced stage of balding is usually taken as quite common occurrence for older individuals. So when a youngster develops an advanced level of balding, it is a factor or it is a, it is a type of premature aging for that person. So in that way, smoking does contribute to aging. And if you remember the advanced glycation end products from the last episode, smoking allows these AGEs to accumulate in the hair follicle roots as well as in the skin. And that's one of the key ways in which it, it causes the cells to age faster. So even though we talk about so many negative effects on the skin and the hair attributable to smoking, just like how quitting or cessation of smoking brings back the cardiac health, brings back or reverses the changes, the degenerative changes that happen in the brain and the heart and other organs. Similarly, cessation of smoking can help reduce the speed of hair fall, can bring back the youth and the glow of the skin much faster than it can uh, bring back the hair actually. So the skin responds much, much faster to cessation of smoking with increase in the skin's glow, reflectance, reduction in pigmentation, reduction in patchy skin, brings on a even skin tone, reduces the occurrence of acne, while the hair responds a little slowly. You may see an improvement in the hair to a lesser extent because the hair is much more strongly dictated by genetic factors as compared to just exposomes alone. So in, in, uh, when, it, when you think about the bear story, we spoke about how much room there is for the genome to accommodate the exposome. When it comes to the hair, the genome is already sitting, occupying a large area of the space. So the exposome factors, even if a little comes in, it tends to cause accelerated hair fall. Now, here is where we talk about the Mola story. Many a times we see people trying to repair the skin or the hair without addressing the main factor that caused it to go bad in the first place. So we search for our results in a different place from where we lost our health. So it's very important to identify that unless you're going to fix the cause, the effect will not take care of itself. So even though you try multiple types of treatment, multiple application serums, sometimes even multiple dermatologists, the most important factor always seems to be how you look at lifestyle and consistency in looking after yourself. Skin and hair health is one area where regular habits give compound interest and pay off rich dividends. And therefore, I request that you start with looking for your health exactly where you lost it and do all the lifestyle measures that you can do on your own so that your dermatologist can only assist you with stuff that you can't take care of by yourself. You take care and I'll see you with the second part of this pollution-induced skin aging, namely the external pollution. See you soon.